Travis Alexander's ex-girlfriend, Deanna Reed, and, and that's one of the big points. That's why Juan Martinez wanted her out there uh, to talk about whether or not he was abusive in any way. Let's bring our experts back. Beth Karras, again, knows the case inside out. There she is, along with Jeff Gold. There they are. So let, Beth, let me start with you. I'll get Jeff's take as well. On that point about whether or not Travis was abusive, did Juan Martinez win that? How important was Deanna Reed on that point? Well, she had nothing but good things to say about Travis Alexander. Sure, they had their arguments, but he was never abusive. He never touched her physically in an abusive way. He never called her names. So he was never psychologically, emotionally abusive. They had a very tender, loving relationship, she said. And of course, the defense as well has a very different relationship with you than what he had with Jody Arias. Yeah, and Jeff, that's the argument, right? The defense is going to try and say, different woman, different relationship. Well, I think the jury knows that, Mike. I mean, they, they get to see Deanna. They get to see that she had a normal relationship with uh, a Travis. And they have heard the sex tape and, and seen emails and texts uh, as to Travis and Jody. So they know that maybe when uh, the uh, girlfriend is normal, Travis is normal. And maybe when the girlfriend's a sex fiend, he's a bit of a sex fiend. They're getting that point. Got it. All right. Well, speaking of which, and, and this is where... In, in, I don't think anybody's surprised Kirk Nermes was going to ask Deanna Reed about their potential sex life, Travis and Deanna. But let's listen to it. I think some are thinking maybe he went over the line. You guys were in the courtroom. Let's listen to it, and we'll get your take. Did he ever use phrases with you that, that you're the ultimate slut in bed? No. Did he ever call you a whore? No. A slut? No. A three wonder? No. Did he ever tell you how he wanted to tie you to a tree and, quote, put it in your ass? No. You must have had a different relationship than he did with Miss Arias, correct? Objection, lack foundation. All right, there you go. Uh, Jeff, I'll start with you. First off, did, was there any reaction in the courtroom? You can see the disgust almost on Deanna Reed's face, but what about in the courtroom? Well, as it was building up to this, there was some apprehension because you kind of felt for Diana, and at least, uh, Diana, around me, there was a groan. Uh, it wasn't a loud groan, but there was a groan because you saw, why was he doing this to Deanna? Was that necessary? It was totally unnecessary. Mm -hmm. You could have done it in a different way. He didn't need to do it, and people felt uncomfortable. Did the jury feel just as uncomfortable? I don't know. Right. Beth, go ahead. Weigh in on it. I don't know if I agree with... Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that, Jeff, although I do like your analysis. <laughs> Just I do think that um, the defense needed to ask her about her sexual relationship with Travis Alexander to show that from their point of view, he was a man who was highly sexual and had sex with other women as well. Um, and, and so I, I mean, I, I do think it was sort of the elephant in the courtroom. We all wanted to know, did they have a sexual relationship? And we got the answer only on cross-examination. And real quick, Beth, what was your read on Deanna? Didn't she seem uncomfortable a answering those questions? Probably knew they were coming. Well, she was matter of fact, we'll say that. I, I think she knew they were coming, um, and she was very courageous to be up there and mm. answering these questions uh, in front of a bunch of strangers. Yeah, and, and again, we all, just on a human front, the dynamic that must play out, you're out and you, you kind of know this is coming for all the world to hear about uh, your sex life with uh, the victim, Travis Alexander. All right, much more with Jeff and Beth coming up. I want to hear from you, by the way ex-boyfriend Daryl Brewer and then bought one and then decided she didn't need it and returned it. Here we're finding out no such luck, no return. Let's go back to Jeff Gold. Jeff, uh, how, what's the bigger point there? That she had the three gas cans or maybe she lied to the jury? Well, isn't that good? That's a good, that's a good point. Uh, because one, his consistent theme is that A, she's a liar, and B, she's a murderer. So by that evidence, he's doing both. Because this witness said, and it was subject to one caveat, that there could be human error. But really, her testimony, it wasn't DNA testimony, but it was pretty impossible for this to have happened and there be no record. It could have, but it was pretty impossible. So yes, it proves she lied directly to the jury during those 11 days of direct, and it also proves that she had premeditation. She took those gas cans because she didn't want records that she stopped on the way to Arizona to get gas. As you listen to this case, is that the best argument for premeditation, and, and is how good is the argument there? 
Uh, well, it's circumstantial, and people ask me the question all the time. Let's tell, tell the viewers, you know, circumstantial evidence can be just as satisfying as direct evidence. And the example I want to give is snow. For example, direct evidence is I woke up in the middle of the night, I looked outside, it was snowing. That's direct evidence. Or you could say I went to bed, there was no snow on the ground, I woke up, foot of snow. Either way proves it snowed. Mm. What Juan Martinez is doing is putting all the pieces together through circumstantial evidence to say this was planned. Got it. And the gas cans is one of those pieces. All right. Uh and that, that's it. Again, it's a huge point here, and we're going to continue to talk about it. Also this, and Jeff can attest to it, what is going on outside the, the uh, courtroom where we're getting people scalping tickets? What, they're going to cough up 200 bucks and they get caught for it? Uh, you're going to hear that story when we come back. Still a little bit of a circus when it sounds like you got scalping going on out there. Jeff Goldback with us. is uh, Jeff, does that surprise you? What are you seeing as you walk into court there in Phoenix? Uh, well, I don't see any scalping, so that was that was pretty unusual. Slightly uh, more heinous than uh, when uh, Larry David scalped tickets to the High Holidays, Jewish High Holidays, on his show. But uh, you know, look, it's packed. The people wait on the uh, other side, opposite where the courtroom is. They get their line up early in the morning, and they wait to get seats. And the uh, the uh, uh, the gallery for citizens to come watch is always packed. All right. So, the, and there you see it, two hundred bucks. Hey, do we have video of the the? The lunacy with the Casey Anthony trial as people were trying to uh, as people were trying to get in there. I mean, look at this stampede, Jeff. I don't know if you can see the monitor. Are you feeling that this could come down the road as we get closer to verdict day? No, uh, I don't. Uh, I just don't. I, I, you know, it, it hasn't been like that now. Uh, is it possible? It's possible, but uh, I just haven't noticed it. Everybody is very orderly. Uh, there's really uh, none of this, and there's not the hysteria. There seemed to be a, a bit more hysteria in the case. Maybe it had to do with a baby and, right. and motherhood feelings. Maybe it evokes some, you know, feelings that this case just does not. There's interest in it, but I don't think we're going to see Stampede. Yeah, and that's an interesting point, and I think that there was potentially more day-to-day -day coverage of the Casey Anthony case leading up to that trial as opposed to Jody Arias. I mean, we haven't been on the Jody Arias case every day for five years since the uh, killing took place. Uh, so that's an interesting point. But, but before we leave that point, what is your sense? I mean, people are, sounds like some folks are driving a long way to get there, to get to their seat in court. Uh, one woman said, hey, I want to I want to see Jody Arias, the person at the heart of this case. Uh, what, what, what kind of feeling well, do you sense, though, as you see the people and, and well, in the Well, first courtroom? of all, I... First of all, they get to watch daily coverage here on HLN, right. which is something they didn't really get to see before. And they can sit home and not only watch a feed, but they can hear commentary on it. So, um, you know, it's different. Uh, you know, HLN is not a, a low-grade uh, channel. That's one that everybody has. And so that's made it different. They can sit home comfortably, watch it, enjoy it, if that's what their predilection is. So I don't think they feel the same way. And as I said before, I think there was something about motherhood that just mm. triggered people going out there. Um, but I do think it's been well attended. I think at closings, it will be even more packed than now, waiting for seats. And maybe there'll be a line for closings. There always is openings and closings. People get a summary of what's going on, and they, they think in one day they'll get the, the whole show. So I expect on closing day to uh, be even more people lined up. Yeah. Uh, and again, people, they want to see justice, and they've seen a lot with this case. And we're going to continue again. Hearing's supposed to be coming up about a half hour from now. We're taking your calls as well, by the way make you uncomfortable listening to it? I felt dirty. Mm. There I you go. I felt dirty inside, yes. yeah. Oh, well, and that's, uh, let me get Jeff Golden on this. Uh, Jeff, that, and some folks are tweeting that as well, that uh, here Jen K tweeted this, I, that he almost seemed to enjoy it, bad move for the defense. Uh, did you cringe in the courtroom? Do you think jurors might have been cringing inside to listen to this? Absolutely, Mike. I cringe. Look, I'm a defense attorney. That's what I do every day. But you know what? If you want to make the point, you can ask, did he call you names? You know, did he berate you? You don't have to use those terms simply to get them over to the jury. There's a closing later. He'll be able to say those words again and make his argument. He did not need to make it to this witness. It was offensive to the listener, and uh, uh, listeners are jurors. There you go. And that, that's a key question here. Again, it's open mic. Taking your calls at one eight seven seven tell HLN. Uh, let's. Go. Thanks for the call, Alicia. Appreciate it. So there you go, Jeff. So Alicia's saying big win for the prosecutors on both fronts uh, for Prosecutor Juan Martinez on memory goes too far. But back to the gas cans. Uh, you know.
that she didn't return them and that she loaded up after the uh, after killing Travis. I heard you had the gas cans, Mike. I, oh, that I was do. A different... I've, got, I've got one of them anyway, right here. Five gallons. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, look, all those witnesses, those five witnesses that he put on, uh, short witnesses, all made their points. They yeah. were all points for the uh, state, and the defense didn't touch any of them. Yeah. And what about that? How about the speed of, I mean, Jody Aries was on the stand 18 days, and what did we get? Five witnesses yesterday, rapid fire? That had to feel a little different in that courtroom. Well, it did, and that's the nature of rebuttal. That's what rebuttal is supposed to be, really. You're just tidying up small points. It's not a whole nother state's case in chief. The state's had its chance. The defense has had its chance. If the defense brings up something new, something that wasn't part of the state's case that they responded to, then the state can come back, but they don't have free reign. They're only supposed to narrowly pick those things that are new and address them. And what Juan is saying is, I made my case. I could care less about most of the the defense case, I'm going to tidy it up. One, two, three, four, five. That he did. Uh, let's go back to the phones here. Lynn's with us in New Jersey. Hey, Lynn, did Nermi go too far or not? Absolutely, he went too far. That young lady did not deserve to be disrespected like that. He could have asked her a few pointed questions and gotten to the point instead of being so specific and beating a dead horse and going that the jury may think, wait a minute, Travis Alexander was perfectly fine with a more, uh, we'll say, traditional relationship. Uh, but then Jody Arias comes onto the scene, and it's uh, Katie bar the door. <laughs> you know, that is, is that exactly the point that I got. I got that from the direct of her, and that cross-examination didn't make me think anything but disrespectful for the defense. There was really no reason for Kurt to do that. I don't know if Deanna's a good girl or a bad girl, but her testimony had nothing to suggest she deserved to be treated that way. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying she needed to be treated like a lady, but she needed to be tr treated with human respect. Jody is allegedly a liar and a murder. Come after her as a liar and a murder. There was nothing to suggest in the cross-examination that what would come out of it is Deanna was a liar or a, a sex fiend or a or anything else so she should have been treated with respect and I think the jury probably got that point all right many of our viewers agree with that assessment let's let's uh, talk to another one Rose is with us in Wisconsin hey Rose. I think but I know I've used a credit card before and I get cash back and I don't think they're supposed to do it but they do it got it. so <laughs> but yes big prosecution win yeah and hey Jeff Gold what about that uh, is that a bad move from the defense does that signal to the jury you're conceding this point and she didn't just lie about the story, she lied to this jury. Isn't that a different level? I think the defense is saying that uh, the point itself is a bit foggy. Two gas cans, three gas cans, maybe it doesn't really matter, but Jody said she returned it. This witness conceded it could have happened uh, because of human error. Now, she went into some more detail, but, you know, I think the point is is that if a cashier just gave her cash back and somebody's register didn't actually uh, cash out, maybe that's the human error they're talking about. I don't know. I just think it's a foggy point. The state's going to say these gas cans prove that it's premeditation, uh, and, the, and the defense is going to say, no, it doesn't. I, I just think they want to steer away from it. Okay, and, well, let's go to the next level where Juan Martinez took it, guys. Let's listen to Chelsea Young. She works for the Soro laying on the bed, right? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. All right. Pictures. Plural. Yeah, pictures. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, getting back to the general theme, Juan Martinez, very methodical, very streamlined, don't you think, in this rebuttal case, hitting point after point, not belaboring them, but just making the point and moving on. Well, absolutely. And this is a very crucial thing. I mean, this is almost the most disturbing part of Jody Arias's defense. You know, she says apparently that it's on the computers. And, you know, as a defendant, she's now privy to all the discovery, so gets to know that there's nothing on the computers later. And all of a sudden now, we're talking about physical pictures, not something on the computer or printed from the computer. And Alice Levia just assumed it. Or is this really Jody Arias manipulation again? Uh, and it's really very disturbing to the family. You can imagine oh, yeah. that this uh, been, victim yeah. is butchered and now butchered again They've been through with the these ringer. kind of allegations. On, on when every Juan front, can... they've been yes. through the ringer. Guys, we're going to be right back much more, and we'll take your calls in a little bit. In that One courtroom, you've seen some of the folks, I'm sure, waltzing in to, to get their place in line and, and get their seat in that courtroom to watch this unfold in person. 
Well, you know, um, I don't think it's a circus. I understand that there's a lot of media attention, but I don't think it's a circus. And one of the, uh, the Gold Patrol, the tweeters out there said, you're not smiling, Jeff, on camera today. Well, heck, Travis Alexander is dead, and Jody Arias may go and, and die as well. It's sometimes very, very difficult to take this case lightly. Um, you know, the coloring book is fine, but we're here in a murder case, and I don't think that the media is taking it lightly just because no. they're paying a lot of attention. There's people there. We're not joking about it. I want to tell you something, there is a, a serious matter before us. And I think everybody at HLN, for example, takes this very seriously. Absolutely. I mean, we, we, we've seen the pain. We've seen the tears of Travis Alexander's family. Here's a man who did not deserve what he got. Uh, we've got a family and, and, and siblings that are broken up. Do we have the lighter moments in the midst of this? Certainly we have, and certainly a coloring book is one of them. I mean, it's surreal as I look sure. at the pictures now, uh, and they're selling now like hotcakes as we, we talk about them. So those are the moments where we just take a breath, and uh, yeah, we smile a little bit, but this is a death penalty case, and, and we're taking your calls. You, you are passionate about this case as viewers.